Welcome to Greg Plays Games. Thank you for checking out this video. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you happen to stumble upon here. But uh, other than that, today I have my list of October games to keep your eyes out for. Uh, this isn't really in any particular order of importance, and this is also not all of the games that come out in October. This is just kind of my a uh, shortened list of notable games that released this month that I think might be worth checking out. And then at the end I'll kind of give you uh, which games I'm going to be looking at purchasing. So starting out with October 5th, we have Alan Wake releasing on uh, your PlayStation and Xbox platforms. And then we also have Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania releasing on all platforms. Uh, Alan Wake is a game I think originally came out on Xbox 360, PS3, that generation of consoles. Uh, so it's kind of neat to see that remastered. That's actually a game that I've never played. Uh, and it just kind of tonally seems like a perfect October Halloween game. Uh, and then drastically contrasting that, you have Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania which is uh, obviously a lot more colorful and, and playful than Alan Wake, but equally worth checking out. Uh, I've never played either of these games, actually, so definitely going to consider picking up one of these ones. On October 7th, Far Cry 6 is going to release on PS5 or the PlayStation consoles and the Xbox consoles. Uh, they're, they're covering both generations, I believe. Actually, I don't know that that's... 100% accurate, but I feel like most games have been. But this game, I'm surprised at what this game looks like. It's been a, a long time since I've played a Far Cry game. Like, I last game I played was on Xbox 360. I think it may have been Far Cry 2 or 3. And, I mean, I, I love the open world direction the game is in now, and the amount of customization on your weapons. Also, it looks like you'll be able to customize your vehicles. Uh, and it, you know, I love that the gameplay seems to be open-ended, like it seems each mission will have multiple paths to completion, uh, as well as, you know, interacting with characters and, and NPCs. It looks like it's going to be a really good game. I know, I think Far Cry has a pretty, pretty solid fan base, so I'll be curious to see the reviews on this one and, and see what fans are saying. On October 8th, we have two very big Nintendo Switch releases. The first one being the Nintendo Switch OLED model, and the second one, second one obviously being Metroid Dread. And this is definitely going to be a big day for Nintendo, not only to see where fans stand on the Metroid franchise, but also because they have a console dropping. Uh, I think that Metroid will be significantly more successful than the console release just in the fact that uh, I don't know that this Switch OLED is necessarily garnering a lot of attention and a lot of demand from consumers because it doesn't really do anything new or provide any fill in the market. But uh, that's just my opinion on the Switch OLED. Metroid Dread, however, just it looks like a good game. Nintendo obviously does really well on their uh, main franchises and I don't think this is going to be any different. I know Metroid fans have been waiting for a long time for this one. Uh, I'm, I've never played one so I'll be really excited to jump in on the franchise with this game. On October 12th, the Ori collection uh, receives its digital or maybe it's just physical release actually. But this is a Microsoft original game that is going to be on the Nintendo Switch platform. You can already buy both of these games, I believe, but this is just the special limited edition. Uh, I don't know if it's limited edition, but it is a, a special physical release for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I've never played these. I've heard great things. Uh, and this, I would say, argues a better deal than Metroid Dread in a way, so I'll be interested to see how this sells in comparison. On October 22nd, Battlefield 2042 is going to be released on your Xbox, PlayStation platforms, probably PC too. I don't play PC, so I don't really pay attention if games come out on that or not. I'm, I'm sorry, PC fans. I know we got at least one of them. Shout out all the PC fans. 
Uh, but this game, I really haven't played a lot of first-person multiplayer shooters, but for some reason this one is kind of calling my name. I know I used to be a, a huge Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare series fan in general, but since those have kind of, you know, teetered out, I haven't really touched a whole lot of online multiplayer games. But this one looks sick. Uh, not really more eloquent way to put it than that. So you got future guns. You got you know cyber trucks. It looks sick, bro. So I don't know that this will necessarily be a day one pickup for me, but I definitely will be curious to see the reviews uh, and could probably be talked into buying this one if some of my friends got it as well. But really, really excited on the future setting and like the destruction that you can cause in this game. I know that Battlefield has always done a good job with being able to blow stuff up. So, I mean, bare minimum, you'll be able to do that. On October 26th, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to release across platforms, which is kind of crazy. Across all platforms, I mean like Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch. Uh, which seems absurd. I, I mean, the I just don't see how the Switch is going to run this. And I'm, I guess, I guess you know, it runs The Witcher shit. So why not? This game, I originally wasn't really excited about, but then seeing gameplay, I'm, I'm interested in, in seeing what the the combat is like. If it's if you can explore, if it's more linear. Uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna wait for reviews on this game to see what the those say, and I can't really see myself spending a full 60 on it, especially if the reviews are pretty middling. By the way, these dogs look just like Demogorgons from Stranger Things, so some pretty lazy. Uh, I'm sure that those are actually taken from somewhere else too. But I really enjoy the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and I feel like this game has done a good job of of being true to that in a lot of ways and then uh, hopefully taking some of their own creative liberties too but of course we want the the same character experience as those otherwise you know what's the point of playing this game but the combat looks really fun i'm curious if you just play as peter quill the whole time i think you do but it would be kind of cool if you get to play as some of the other characters too i'm sure that information has actually been announced there's a ton of footage of this game already released so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this game does once it's released on the 28th, Riders Republic is going to release PlayStation, Xbox. I think this one's on PC. And this one, I I still don't have a PlayStation 5. I, I'm still rocking with my, my uh, base PlayStation 4. No 4K for me, so, uh, so sad. Uh, world's smallest violin playing in the background. But Riders Republic, it looks it looks fun. It looks interesting. I know that there's definitely some similarity similarities to Steep, mainly from the snowboarding, of course. But just the overall visuals and everything, it's very similar to that game. If you ever played Steep, which I I don't really know if it was successful or not. I had fun with a very brief period of time with that game, and then wasn't interested. So I'm kind of concerned that this game could be more of that but i'm hoping that it kind of exceeds expectations and is actually just a really fun uh action sports game which i have some beef with the fact that they've represented pretty much every single action sport ever invented except for skateboarding uh maybe they do i haven't seen any gameplay or footage of it but uh i mean that's just you got them all why you couldn't throw in skateboarding you don't even have to give us a full trick list just like a, a kickflip a few 180s, you know, maybe a few harder tricks, and you know, go about your day. We don't need to be able to do pressure flips and, you know, other skateboarding words, but hippie jumps. We don't need to do all that. But it doesn't really look like there's much story to the game. That's definitely not the point. It's just to do these challenges, maybe play some events with friends or you know, single player races. I just really think that the graphics look crazy good. I mean, Ubisoft always does a pretty good job with their open worlds from a visual standpoint, but it's just, do they give you meaningfully, meaningful things to do? And, you know, that's always been kind of their, their biggest uh, miss in a lot of their games. So I'll be curious to see how this game performs. Definitely not a must buy, but uh, it looks a lot of fun just from their footage that they've shared. 
And the last game releasing on October 29th is Mario, Mario Party Superstars. Uh, so this will be the second Mario Party game released on the Nintendo Switch. I think this one's going to be very superior. I didn't own Mario Party, the one that came out before this, for Switch. But I did play it and I did enjoy it. But uh, I think that it's great that they added fully functioning multiplayer into all of the game modes for this. I mean, in 2021, the fact that this is a new addition to the game is ludicrous. This should have been implemented, you know, they could have done it on the Wii, really. Maybe they did. I, I highly doubt it if it's just now working this way on the Switch. But Mario Party, you know, it's classic Mario Party, literally. Uh, it, like, has some of their classic courses and boards and everything. So, it'll probably be pretty good. Definitely going to be a fun multiplayer game. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, a few of the games that I know for a fact I'm going to be getting is Metroid Dread and possibly Riders Republic, but it really depends on how the reviews are for that game, uh, specifically for the PlayStation 4 version, because I'm pretty sure everything that I've seen so far is on next-gen consoles, and I want to see how it's performing on the older consoles before... I decided to buy that one. So really Metroid Dread is the only game I'm locked in for this month as probably getting it the day it comes out. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about some of these games or if you'll be playing any of these games in October. Definitely consider liking the video if you haven't at this point and subscribing if you are not yet. Uh, if you are this deep into the video, you're probably subscribed. So thank you for subscribing. We're almost at 100 subscribers. Hell yes. See you in the next one. Peace.